Hello everyone and welcome back. This is the build guide for my Stormburst Trickster that does cold explosions. The build mechanics are a little more complex than usual, so in this build guide we'll be going through those, along with everything else you need to make this character a success. Please note that the character is a budget character between 3 and 4 exalts, although you can spend more on this to scale the build into much higher damage and defences. If you have any questions, you can ask them in the comments below. I'll also leave a path of building link in the description below. I hope you enjoy. And if you do, please subscribe and hit the bell. Stormburst is a physical spell that unleashes orbs of energy while you channel. These orbs repeatedly jump towards the target location until their duration expires. When reaching their duration, these orbs deal damage in an area. The skill converts 50% of its damage to lightning. In most Stormburst builds that I've seen, the additional 50% of physical is converted using a physical to lightning support gem. In our build, we convert the other 50% of the damage to cold with our gloves and then use a Call of the Brotherhood to gain another 40% of the lightning damage as cold. This means that we have around 10% of lightning left in order to inflict shock, whilst the cold freezes and destroys everything in sight. We pretty much guarantee that all trash will be frozen instantly because of our really high critical strike chance, which comes in at around 77.65% once flasks are up. This means that Stormburst is both our most offensive and defensive thing on the build. If at any point we stop channeling, the build deals all remaining duration on all orbs immediately at 75% of their value. Through scaling skill duration on both our support gems and the tree, we are able to reach 2.4 seconds of total duration. This means that each orb deals 75% of its total damage at 6 times the, the initial value. If we assume that each orb did 1000 damage, this would result in 4500 damage being dealt per orb. In addition to this, we stack Critical Strike Multiplier to a total of 423%, which means that when we crit, the damage is quadrupled. Bear in mind that at the current time the build is coming in at a budget of around 3 to 4 exults, meaning that there's a hell of a lot of headroom left to min-max the build to get much, much more damage. Before the start of each boss fight, we channel our skill, which using our ascendancy starts to charge up both our frenzy and power charges to their maximum level. We get both of these to maximum level before we engage the boss. The large range on Storm Burst allows us to attack the boss from a safe distance, meaning we take far less damage than we would if we were melee. If we do come to a particularly difficult boss, we would pulse the skill instead of channeling it, meaning that it keeps detonating using all remaining duration for much higher damage than we would get from channeling alone. And if we do this while standing in the middle of Orb of Storms, Orb of Storms unleashes additional bolts, causing much more damage. Orb of Storms is supported by Culling Strike, meaning that when the boss reaches 10% of life, it will be deleted. In order to maintain the low price of the build, there's a couple of tricks we have up our sleeve to boost damage. One of these is Arcane Surge, which is propped each time we use Flame Dash. This grants us 13% more spell damage and cast speed, and also gives us a small amount of mana regeneration, and this applies to all spells, not just Flame Dash. On our cast when damage taken, we have a high level Wave of Conviction, 
and as this deals mostly cold damage because of our conversion from Call of the Brotherhood Ring, it causes them to lose 25% of their cold resistance, making them much easier to freeze and destroy. We also continue this cold reduction trend by cursing people with frostbite on our cast when damage taken, which reduces their cold resistance by 43%. It also increases our chance to freeze by 25%, although this is pretty pointless as we pretty much crit every hit anyway. Moving swiftly onto the auras for this build, of which there are four, the first is Herald of Ice, which is the main cause for us to blow up the entire screen. This is linked to added cold support to give it more potency at the cost of mana reservation. Second is our level 12 clarity, without which the build would feel terrible. Then we have Herald of Thunder, which has the nice added benefit of blowing up every crate anywhere near us, and adding extra damage in the form of lightning to all of our spells which is then scaled into cold. And lastly we take flesh and stone, which massively increases our defensiveness through blinding enemies and reducing their incoming damage. And whilst we're on the subject of defensiveness, here's what this build utilises to stay safe. The first of these defensive layers comes in the form of steel skin as a level 19 gem, supported by cast when damage taken. This grants us a buff which absorbs 70% of our incoming damage up to a maximum amount. This increases our effective HP pool by around 2,000, which puts our effective HP at well over 6,500. Next, we utilise the Valgrace gem. Whilst active, this increases our effective dodge chance to just below the cap for attack and on the cap for spells, at 73% and 75% respectively. This effectively means that 3 out of 4 attacks and spells against us just vanish without doing any damage to us. The one hit or spell that does get through then has to contend with 68% of evasion, once we take blind into effect of course. In the unlikely event that anything is actually able to hit us, it then has to contend with our full 75% elemental resistances. Any damage left over after this is then mitigated by our infused channeling, which occurs whenever we're channeling. It causes us to take 8% less damage from the types listed in the tags for Stormburst, which is Spell, Lightning, and Physical. Now as our armor is pitiful, we utilize the Taste of Hate Flasks, which converts 20% of incoming physical damage to cold, which we can then mitigate against our 75% resistances. And then to top all this off, we use Doriana's Invitation, which causes 0.6% of our cold damage to be leached as life. Now let's talk about the gear selection for this build. In our main hand, we utilize an imbued wand. The one you're now seeing on the left is my current wand, and I picked this up for 15c. That said, this was the cheapest one on the market. The key priorities you want to aim for on the wand are a very large increased spell damage, added lightning damage to spells, increased critical sight chance, and global crit multi. If you're going to take this build way beyond the budget that it's on now, then you'd be looking for plus one to level of either lightning, physical, or spell skill gems. You'd also be looking for increased lightning damage, as high roll as possible. So why lightning damage and not cold? The reason for this is that because of our ascendancies, the chance to hit with extra chaos damage based on our non-chaos damage. And the way that conversion works, physical is first taken into account to make that chaos damage, and then that is converted to lightning and done again, and then cold and done again. So at each level, that damage increases. So if we stack lightning, we get a higher lightning roll, but also a higher cold roll to scale that chaos damage. For our offhand weapon, I chose a shimmer on. This is by far the most cost-effective wand for generating damage on this build. It costs a fraction of my main hand wand and deals more damage. So with that said, why didn't I pick two of them? The wand has a somewhat nasty drawback, and that is that each time we crit, for each power charge we have, we take 200 lightning damage per second. Now we have six power charges, which means we take a total of 1200 lightning damage per second unresisted. Now this isn't quite as bad as it sounds, because our resistances reduce this to 300 damage per second. That said, it's still a lot of incoming damage that we wouldn't have to deal with otherwise, and if we double our number of wands, we double that damage to 600. An additional problem we have with taking this damage is that most of the time it keeps our energy shield very very low, so we don't always get the best bonuses from our ascendancies. But overall, it just didn't feel as safe as it does with just one of the wands. Now this build does do a fair amount of damage already, coming in at 5.8 million DPS against Trash, and over 3 million DPS against Cyrus. If you did want to choose a second Shimmer on, that would increase that damage to 6.2 million. Another trick to note here as well, is that while Shimmer ons are really cheap, almost perfectly rolled Shimmer ons are actually much more expensive. But you can get a corrupted one, that you can then use the crafting bench to recraft the sockets to the ones that you need. Being a one, this isn't very expensive on Valorbs, as there's only three sockets to contend with. And that's why you're seeing my Shimmer on as Corrupted. I picked this up for 5c, instead of at least 20 I'd be paying for a perfectly rolled wand. 
Another good strong one to consider is the Void Battery. Whilst this doesn't give the sheer damage that you get from the Shimmer on, and also has the, af the side effect of doing less damage while you're not on full power charges and frenzy charges, which we are pretty much all the time after the first, I don't know, two packs of the map. But once the condition of full power charges and frenzy charges are met, the one gives us very, very good damage. Not as good as the Shimmer on, but it's a close second. The reason I didn't choose this on this build is it's a little on the expensive side, coming in at somewhere around 35 to 45C. The gloves for this build are the Rim Sorrow. These are mandatory for the build to work as they convert the remainder of physical damage on Storm Burst to cold. These are dirt cheap and can be picked up for less than a Chaos. For the boots, we go for the cheaply priced Aziri's Step. These give a large amount of evasion rating as well as a nice life roll, a 30% movement roll and then a 16% chance to dodge spell hits. These take us to the dodge cap for spells, which is primarily why I chose them. If you do have any resistance holes, however, you can quite happily replace these with a pair of rare boots. And if you are going for rare boots, prioritise life, resistances, and movement speed. A large evasion rating would also be extremely useful. For our chest piece, I selected a cheap rare chest. This should be six linked in a five blue, one red configuration. My current chest is shown to the left, and as you can see, it's garbage. And our two primary concerns are plus X to maximum life, at which you want at least 100, and as much evasion rating as we can muster, preferably at least over 1,000. A craft of plus X percent to maximum life and plus X percent to mana would also be very, very useful on this chest. And then just use any spare suffix slots to fill out resistance and any attributes you may be missing. If you are made of money and want to go extremely defensive, then I highly recommend the um, chest piece The Perfect Form. This gives us the free use of Arctic Armor, and we have a free gem slot for that. It also gives us uncapped cold resistance to evasion and phaser acrobatics, saving as a slot on the tree. In fact, it's almost the perfect defensive selection for this build. In the trouser slot, we choose the, uh, oh silly me, heroes don't wear trousers. Moving swiftly on to the belt that doesn't hold up trousers, and our mandatory belt for this build is Doriana's Invitation. Please note that not all these belts are made equal. They have various different attributes. The one you want is 0.6% of cold damage leached as life. This is our primary way of generating life on the build and is absolutely essential, especially if you're using Shimmerons. It also gives us a nice 20 to 30% increase in cold damage, which is extremely nice on this build. We'll talk about the rings on the build now, as one of these is the last mandatory item on the build. And this is probably the most expensive item that will go on this build. It's the Call of the Brotherhood. This ring is absolutely essential if you want to convert lightning to cold. It also gives us some much needed increased mana regeneration rate and some equally nice increased lightning damage. We can start using this ring at level 20 and I do suggest you use it as soon as possible. Now, as I said, this ring is expensive. Um, at the time I bought mine early in the league, it was half an X. They're now up to one X. In our second ring slot, we use an inexpensive rare. Mine gives me extra life, mana, resistances, and some crit strike multi. This is pretty much the optimal for the build and I would suggest you go for something like this. For the helmet, the thing appearing from the left is my current helmet, which um, is far from trashy for a change. Now I probably wouldn't have picked this helmet if it wasn't for the fact that I bought it with the increased storm burst damage on it and then rolled the increased energy shield. And this helmet was surprising me very, very cheap towards the beginning of the league. I also suspect I bought it off a new player who didn't quite know what he had. And I did feel guilty for about two minutes afterwards, if that helps. So what do we want from a helmet? I strongly recommend getting the increased storm burst damage. And then you pretty much want what's on this helmet. However, for the base, I would probably go for a mixture of evasion and energy shield. The energy shield is good because it scales up our evasion based on our ascendancies. That said, you'd probably be just as good with a mixture of energy shield and evasion, providing you get a decent enough roll of energy shield. Another very good helmet for this slot would be the Vertex, providing you can get it with the increased storm burst damage. Now, there were none available on the market when I bought my helmet, which is why I don't have one. But also you need to make sure that your resists are capped and this helmet does cap my resists, whereas the Vertex wouldn't. And finally we reach the last piece of gear, the amulet. The key thing to talk about first is the anointment. I cannot recommend this enough for this build. We go with Heart of Ice, which grants us 25% increased cold damage, cold penetration at 6% of resistances, and 0.2% of cold damage leached as energy shield, which helps us offset some of that damage from the Shimmer Arms. And this anointment isn't that expensive if you manage to get two of the oils required to make it yourself. I created the crimson and opalescent oils myself and bought the golden oil. This came in at around 30 chaos. To create oils, you use the vendor recipe where you sell three oils to get the next tier up. And I would highly recommend this method to anyone on a tight budget 
it can also be a fairly consistent way of making currency if you run enough blight maps. Anyway, that's enough of a tangent. Back to the amulet. Our primary concerns for the amulet are any missing attributes we've got. So in this case, we get strength and dexterity. I think I only needed strength for this. We also want crit strike multi, maximum life, and any resistance holes filled. Anything else on the amulet is a pure bonus. I've rolled a craft of 8% increased area of effect and 13% increased area damage, which works really well. And if you do decide to min max, then you're probably aiming for plus X to level of socketed X gems to help boost Stormburst. And we can't possibly finish talking about gear without talking about the flasks. Our first flask is an eternal life flask of staunching. This means that it takes off bleed. Moving on to the taste of hate, and while this isn't essential, I highly recommend it. It makes the build feel so much stronger. And this is because while also giving us a load of damage, it also takes 20% of our incoming physical damage and converts it to cold, which is then offset against our resistances. Our third flask is a Quicksilver, and this has the Adrenaline Roll to give it even more speed than it gives us already. In the fourth slot, we have a Diamond Flask of Heat, which one, gives us a load of critical strike chance, and two, removes Freeze and Chill. And in the final slot is a Xeris Promise. This flask is a must for this build. Basically, whenever it's up, you will leech any Chaos damage that you do as life. And we do a lot of Chaos damage, one from the flask itself, which converts a load of non-Chaos damage to Chaos damage, but also from one of our sentences. And now onto the ascendancy choices for this build. We go Trickster. And the node we choose first is Swift Killer. This is really good for leveling. It gives us plus one to maximum frenzy and power charges. 15% chance to gain a frenzy or power charge on kill. 5% increased damage per frenzy and power charge. This stacks up quite a lot. And then gain a power or frenzy charge each second while channeling. This is really big for bosses, because we can stand in the boss room, channel until we get maximum charges before attacking the boss, and so we attack him at our very best. Our next ascendancy point goes into Harness the Void. This gives us somewhat inconsistent damage, but it's still strong damage. It gives us 25% chance to gain 25% of non-chaos damage with hits as extra chaos damage. Try saying that 10 times fast, and I'm not repeating it for the other two, but they give us 15% chance for a 50% damage and 5% chance for 100% damage. Now because it's extra chaos damage, it's a more multiplier. So this can give you basically 100% more damage 5% of the time. So add those up, you get 45% chance to gain chaos and 55% chance to not. But we are getting it roughly every one in two shots. For our defensive nodes, we're going Ghost Dance. This gives us 3% chance to evade while we have energy shield. 2% reduced damage taken per Ghost Shroud. We gain a Ghost Shroud every 2 seconds up to a maximum of 3. When we hit, we lose a Ghost Shroud and recover Energy Shield equal to 4% of our evasion rating. And we gain 10% increased movement speed while we have Energy Shield. Now the Energy Shield's a bit flaky because of the Shimmerons, because the damage can knock our Energy Shield down to 0. But every time we get hit, the Ghost Shroud kicks in, which boosts our Energy Shield. So when we get hit, we actually get all our bonuses from our Ascendancy but the rest of the time we don't normally get them. We could counter this with more Energy Shield Leech. Um, we've only got the stuff off our anointment, but there are other stuff on the tree you could consider. Finally, we go for Escape Artist. This is quite a big one, and it's why we go for a really Energy Shield Helmet rather than just Evasion, because we get plus five of Evasion rating for each maximum Energy Shield on the helmet. We also get one maximum Energy Shield per six Evasion rating on the body armor, 6% increased attack and cast speed per Ghost Shroud. So this is quite a lot, 12, 18, when we're at maximum Ghost Shrouds. We cannot be stunned while we have Ghost Shrouds. That's really useful, because we don't want to get stunned, because if we're stunned, we're probably going to die. We also have a 10% chance to dodge spell hits if we have Energy Shield, which again, will be whenever we're hit. So when we're hit, we'll gain 10% chance to dodge. That really sums up the Ascendancies. I wouldn't suggest taking these in any other order. Um, Swift Killer's great for early leveling. Harness the Void just gives you that extra damage to kill bosses quicker as you level. And then you don't really need the defenses till later. Although if you watch my video series, which will be shown in the description below, you might think otherwise. Okay, moving on to the tree now. And we come out of the Shadow Starting node and come round here up the top. We come up here, grab that node, grab this life, come down, grab the life grab up to phase acrobatics, that's our first priority. 
Once we've done that, we come up through here, grab this life. Don't get the crit early on because it doesn't scale massively fast. Now, there's two options here. We can either continue around this way, or you can come through here and then roll it off later. The reason to come through here is it gets to this node and this node quicker, and they are massive for boss damage because it allows the pulse play where it basically scales up our damage based upon the number of, uh, the amount of duration remaining. So you do want to get these early and then these life nodes. Once you've got those, you want to come up here and start focusing on the crit. Crit here, some extra life. These nodes are quite nice. The um, cannot be stun uh, avoid stun while channeling and various other channeling damage. I think that gives you 30% um, increased damage while channeling, which is nice. And then fill out your crit and anything else we missed as we go around and then f at the very last place we finish off this crit node here grab these power charges fill out these frenzy charges basically just round it off now with regards to jewels they're pretty um i've only got two on the tree i believe yeah so our jewels is this one which is just damage to spells damage while dual wielding because two ones are classed as dual wielding and then this one which gives us life freeze duration global fizz damage the freeze duration is pretty pointless i just wanted life and global fizz because obviously fizz scales more than anything else on the build moving on to the gem links now and let's start with our six link which is storm burst linked to infused channeling conch effect efficiency control destruction and inspiration know that these gems are in the order of importance so for a four link you'd use storm burst infused channeling conch effect efficiency and for your fifth link, you'd use Control Destruction. In one of our ones, we need three greens. Only two of these need to be linked. This is for our Herald of Ice setup and Val Grace. Herald of Ice is linked to added Cold for that little bit of extra oomph as it explodes, and Val Grace just helps us reach Dodge Cap. Our second one is a three link, two blues and a green, made up of Flame Dash, Arcane Surge, and Second Wind. Arcane Surge, we stop leveling at level seven to make sure it procs each time that Flame Dash is triggered for that increased extra damage. In our gloves, we only have three gems. These do not need to be linked, and these are Aurora's Flesh and Stone, Clarity, and Herald of Thunder. If you do go for the perfect form, then you'll also stick Arctic Armor in the gloves with an extra green. If you're not going for the perfect form, then feel free to put whatever you like in here, maybe a portal gem, maybe something completely different, like Valhaste. Now do note that I'm not giving a full explanation of each of the gem selections here, and that's because most of these were covered in the mechanics section towards the beginning of the video. So this is just what you link, not why you link it. Moving on to the helmet now, which houses our Cast When Damage Taken setup. We have Cast When Damage Taken linked to Steel Skin, Wave of Conviction, and Frostbite. This is two reds and two blues. Our last four link is Orb of Storms and is housed in the boots. This is supported by Innovate, Energy Leech, and Culling Strike. If we kill a shocked enemy with Orb of Storms, which should happen frequently, Innovate will give us Innovation, which is a buff that will give all our spells and increase the lightning damage. The buff lasts 8 seconds before dropping off, so do try and keep this up as much as possible. When it comes to selecting the Bandit to help, there's one clear winner for this build, and it's Alira. Alira grants us 5 mana regeneration per second, which helps us level early on because we're really struggling for mana early on. 20% chance to global critical strike multiplier, which is that extra bit of multiplier that just helps early on, and then 15% to all elemental resistances, which makes gearing the character much, much easier, especially early on. It also makes it cheaper long term because you don't have to buy all those expensive resist items to fill those gaps. And now for the Pantheons. Our greater Pantheon is Solar Lunaris. This is a really defensive one and is really good for this build. I tend never to change this. The lesser Pantheon, um, I tend to change situationally. I am mostly on Tukahama, and that's mostly because I'm too lazy to move when wrapping and stand still a lot. Now the defences when standing still on Tukahama are really good. We get up to 8% physical damage reduction, but also up to 2% of maximum life regenerated per second. And this, this build has really slow life regen. Do make sure you use those vessel thingies to upgrade the Pantheons. Don't leave them on the main one because you're missing out on so much added value. Oh, Cabana, how can you resist those big blue fire thingies? They're amazing. Now I don't normally mention MTX in build guides, that said, I think it's really important in this build because it makes such a difference to the visuals of the game. And that's our Herald of Ice MTX, which is the only one I'm going to mention. If anyone does want to replicate this, it's the Automaton Herald Effect. If anyone's interested in any of the other MTX on the build, then please let me know in the comments below and I will be happy to share. Okay, leveling. 
I level this character with leveling gear. You know, Tabula Rasa, Gold Rim, those boots that make you freeze immune, who always escape me, those gloves that make physical go to cold. More importantly, you can use the skill from level 12 and you get it from Nessa. And unlike some skills, it feels really good when you first get it. If you do want a more in-depth leveling guide, then I have a series of videos um, which will be in the same playlist as this one. It will be listed in the description below. Feel free to go and watch those. There's a lot of footage in there, but it does go through my leveling process exactly how I leveled it and all the challenges I had while leveling it, which were mostly around me not getting enough life at the right time. You should go for life early. Seriously, do it. Oh, and it goes without saying, get Herald of Ice and Herald of Thunder in Act 2 as soon as you can and equip them. What to say about this build? Um, it kind of started off because I wanted to do cold damage to sort of protect myself as sort of a defensive measure. And I've seen some pretty successful Frostblade builds, but I wanted to do something a little bit different. And so I thought, why not do lightning and convert it to cold? And Stormburst looks pretty good. I suppose the main thing to say about it is it's really fun to play. Um, so much more than my League Start, to be honest. Whilst it's more fun than the League Start, you can't expect the same damage against bosses. The clear is much, much faster, but the damage against bosses just is a little bit below that of the other builds. And it is really defensive against bosses and things. It's the first Cyrus kill deathless this league. And if you've heard any of my other ramblings throughout this league about not getting much currency, um, you'll know that I've been really struggling to sort of sustain characters. And so it had to be really, really cheap. And this is really cheap. I think the only other thing to mention is I think this build would be even better if we made it energy shield based. That said, it would be a lot more expensive, which is why I didn't go that route. If you are still listening to me, then you're committed and you've got to the end of around 25 minutes of me waffling. I have two words for you. Thank you. Or is that one word? I'm not sure. Either way, YouTube loves videos that are watched to the end, and so you've really helped the channel. So thank you again. And with that, one more time, thank you for watching. Catch you next time. You've been watching Altec 2K. Thank you for watching.